I know Tennessee won 11 games last year, but if you want to take the next step, you got to have a strong rotation. I think uh, defensive line, I think Rodney Garner has the best group he's had since he's been here. Welcome to the Vol Bros. My name is Evan. This is my brother, Rustin, and we are two Vol Bros who are actually bros in real life. And man, oh man, the Vol Bros have been bringing the heat this week. We had Austin Price of VolQuest.com on Monday. Uh, last night, we had a live stream with Jeff Cade of Off the Hook Sport, or Off the Bench Sports, excuse me, Off the Bench Sports in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, next Tuesday, we're going to have our interview with Josh Mancuso released, and there's a special announcement you'll want to hear for that. Uh, but tonight, Man, talk about the cream of the crop. Wide receiver you alum and most sought after media personality in Knoxville right now. Uh, we are very excited to have Mr. Swain himself with us. Jason, welcome so much. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, being an alum of wide receiver you, our first question for you tonight uh, is specifically about that. I know a lot of people are you know, the, the critics of, of this year's Tennessee team. They say you can't lose so much offensive production and expect the same results. You can't lose the Bolitnikoff winner and expect the same results. We've seen, you know, all over X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, uh, Jalen and Cedric are both tearing it up in the league right now in the preseason camp. What do you expect for the wide receiver room this season on Rocky Top? I expect the wide receiver room to be good. Um, last year, it was really two guys. It was Brew McCoy, Jalen Hyatt, and we saw Ramel Keaton come in and make some big plays. Uh, I think it's going to be more guys contributing this year. I mean, Hypo has his work cut out for him to try to get four guys on the football field, the receiver position, you know, Squirrel, Dante Thornton, uh, Brew McCoy, and Ramel Keaton, trying to find ways to get those guys on the field. Uh, but at the same time, you, know, you want to get the tight ends on the field and be able to run the football. So uh, Tennessee didn't have that issue last year, and I call that a good problem, good issue. Mm -hmm. So I think the receiver room is deeper. So you we may not see the same yardage from one receiver like we saw with, with Hyatt, but I think we'll see well, similar production numbers from, from the receiver group as a whole uh, just because of the depth with the wide receivers, which I think is better this year than last. It's going to be hard to spread out the touches. Um, when you when you look at the depth on the perimeter, so many guys that deserve the ball. It, it's going to be I, we're fascinated to see how they're going to spread it around. It's it's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, I mean when you go on three plays in a minute, I mean you, you give yourself more opportunities to get guys sure. uh, the football, especially when you're able to throw the ball out quick on on those screens to to Squirrel and and, and Thornton and, and guys like that. I mean you get them touches and. Um, it may not be down the field throws, but as a wide receiver, you just want the ball in your hands. I don't care if it's a quick screen or a go route. Just give me opportunity to make a play. So, sure, Hypo will find ways, uh, I think, to give those guys uh, the football. They just got to make something happen when they get it. So, outside of the receivers, what position group are you most interested to watch this year? Which one are you pay paying really close attention to? Everyone likes to go offense, and I think offense is really good. Um, I mean, it's fun. It's electric. They've been so productive the last two years. I'm not going to lie. I'm really excited about Jalen Jalen Wright and what he's going to do. I thought he finished the year off very, very strong. Anyone can go pick Joe Milton because of the opportunity that he has. I think he's going to have a good year. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go with the defensive front. I mean, I think uh, when Rodney Garner was hired, I was excited because uh, I, I saw what he was able to do everywhere he's been from – Tennessee to, to Georgia to Auburn. And um, I was looking forward to seeing that type of production from the group at Tennessee. And he's had good players here and there and a good um, a player have a great finish to their career, whether it's Matthew Butler or, um, you know, Byron Young. But this mm -hmm. year, the group, I think, is, is better than it's ever been under Heupel and, and Rodney Garner. I think he's really excited about the group. Uh, we'll see more bodies out there. And, if you if you if you want to compete at this level at the SEC level, you got to have a great rotation of defensive line. And I know Tennessee won eleven games last year, but if you want to take the next step, you got to have a strong rotation. I think uh, with the defensive line. I think Rodney Garner has the best group he's had since he's been here. 
So did you and Austin Price talk before this? <laughs> no, I try not to talk to him, honestly. But unfortunately, <laughs> I have to sometimes. Because earlier this show. week, Earlier this week, he said his two surprise players that he thinks are going to have breakout years are Jalen Wright and Omar Norman Lott. So he went running back and D line just like you did. Well, I mean, Austin's in the know, and um, mm-hmm. I, I like to think that I know a couple things here and there. So I think <laughs> a lot of times our answers are, are going to mirror. So sure. uh, yeah, I mean, defense front certainly better this year than Jalen Wright, and I'm pretty sure Austin picked Jalen Wright because. Him and Jalen Hyatt are really, really, really good friends, best friends. And, you know, Jalen Wright was right there with them uh, at, at Hyatt's draft party. And he saw how Hyatt worked and basically just submitted um, himself to the process and to the program. And, you know, sometimes you just – you don't want to just totally let yourself go. I mean, you hold sure. yourself back. Um I guess it's kind of like being in a relationship, you know, um, when, you, when you just totally submit and you know, declare your love and uh, your relationship takes another step, another level. Um, and I think and that's this what just Hyatt got deep did. on the Vol Bros just now. That was awesome. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I think that's what Hyde did. He just you – know, sometimes you can be t- too cool. You yep. know, oh, man, I'm not going to – I ain't going to go hard. I ain't going to listen 100%. Or, you know, I'm going to do it my way. And then it, but – Jalen Hyatt just totally listened to what the coaching staff told him to do and just fully bought in and just and just gave it his all. And I think that's a good lesson for life. Like, what if Absolutely. you just go all out? And the worst thing that can happen is, hey, you're not successful. Well, at least you went all out and you knew, but Jalen Hyatt right. went all out. And his his prize, the results that he got back, was a bullet in the call. Um, award, getting himself drafted. And I think Jalen Wright saw that and said, you know what, I'm, I'm about to do the same thing. And he has done the same thing. So I'm expecting big results from uh, from Wright. I really am. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think I think we've all heard Ramel Keaton's had that that same work ethic yep. as well, that he's he's really put in the time. And um, I, think, I think he's going to be the surprise. I think he's a guy that has always had explosiveness and, um, you know, with all the other guys on the perimeter, he's he's going to be in a lot of one-on-one situations, and he's if he's put in the work they've said he's put in, I I think he's going to be really really strong. Yeah, is Ramel really a surprise though? I mean, you look at what he did last year and how he finished. That's good. That's good point. I mean, I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of expecting him to do more sure. of what he did last year. Um, but I I understand what what you're saying though, because I mean, Ramel honestly, it took him a while to kind of buy in. Right, um, and, and just just really you know, kind of submerge himself into just being the best player he can be, and on a quest for daily improvement, uh, a relentless pursuit of improvement every single day, and that's 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 what uh, Romel Keaton has been on, and that's why he's had the results that he's had. And you know, I, I hear that he's the best receiver in the group. You know. I, from one person, and the other person tells me, you know, it's brew. But just for him to be in that conversation, I think speaks yeah. to how hard he has been able to work. It's also That's a great awesome. problem to have that multiple people are naming multiple names as the best player in the group. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure, mm-hmm. absolutely, it's good. <laughs> so recently, we've seen, um, you know, you're you're a former Vol VFL. I know you and Ben McKee like to go back and forth about that phrase, um, but I'm a VFL, yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, recently we've seen Peerless Price, Joey Kent, Josh Dobbs, Peyton, lots of guys back on campus, um, for a lot of different reasons, you know, now he's professor Manning apparently, but, um, I'll be curious to see how many people call him that, but you know, there's been a lot of four of VFLs on campus. What, what is it that this athletic department and the football staff is doing that has finally got those guys saying, we really want to be around, we want to be back, we want to be involved? So whenever there's a new administration, they always reach out to the same guys, right? Because you, you want to get the big names on board first. Um, and so or they Jason do that. Swain. No, I mean <laughs> – I guess because the media stuff, but I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. I did meet with Danny White early in the process, um, and I, I'm very thankful for that because I know some other 
big names and made a whole lot more plays than me at Tennessee uh, did that as well. But that's what usually happens. They go go out and, and get a chance to meet with all uh, the big names and people that have influence. And if they can win them over, then those former players will go and, and tell their teammates. And they, they, they hope that uh, you get that support. But what happens is we kind of sense, you know, phoniness, BS, sure. we sense it. And, you know, it might start off good, but over time, the things that go on wrong, <laughs> we all know about, we hear about. Right. Um, People falling on helmets and stuff, right? <laughs> hey, you're right about that. So, <laughs> um, so Danny and, and, and Dondi did, did the same thing when they first um, started working together. And, uh, you know, we just sensed a, 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 a really a genuine uh, feel. And I remember – reaching out to some guys that were like, oh, here we go again. I was like, no, you need to – you might want to give this group a chance. I, th- I think they own something. Because I really voiced all my frustration because I had plenty. Sure. And um, I don't know if you all saw the reports, but there was – like Dondi most recently mentioned the fact that she met with uh, Al Wilson and, and several other players, and they, vo- they voiced their frustration. Uh, that kind of been brewing for a long time. And the best thing they did was just listen, just listen to yeah. everybody, mm. get in the room, and just just hash it out. And since that, it's been it's been awesome. Um, you know, Peerless, he don't he don't he don't come back a lot. Now, he right. may get on Twitter and you know pronounce his love for Tennessee, and uh, man, he he is very very proud of wearing that orange. But I never seen him back when I was playing. Um, but to see him back now, I think is. Uh, really an example of, of, of how everyone has relayed the message like, hey, green light, it. There, it's good. We're we all good. We got the right people in here. You're welcome to come back. I mean, I had an awesome conversation with Dante Stallworth from Mark Jones down at the Orange Bowl the hotel lobby for like hours. Uh, me and my wife was about to get ready to go out on the town uh, in Miami. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a vacation for us. And I saw Dante and I was like, eh. I'm going to need a rain check. And she understood because she knows like how much I looked up to Dante when I was a player and how much I love guys that played before me and those relationships. So she understood. She got it. She sat down with me. We, I mean, we were there talking to Dante and Mark Jones for hours upon hours. And so that's what it's about. And uh, again, just word started to travel that, you know, this, this group was legit. As a, as an alum, it, there's got to be just an incredible sense of pride watching this and going, I mean, the, the continuity that's in that athletic department is just incredible right now. Um, you know, you, you have to be sitting there going, why is it taking so long to get to this point? Well, they listen, man. That's, that's I think that's the, the most important thing that we need to highlight. They, they listen. They came in. They listened. I remember Danny came in and – um <clears throat> He was super, super happy and positive, and uh, he told fans not to you – know, why be so negative? You know, text text a friend, if, you know, if you're going to uh, be we, negative. We use the text-a-buddy comment all the time. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, you know, folks folks didn't like it. They fired off on him a little bit. And I remember meeting with Danny. I was like, <laughs> you know, I agree with you, but you got to understand where they're coming from. Like, yeah. think about from their side of things. Uh, they don't want to hear somebody coming in telling them how to feel and what not to do. And that's why I think <laughs> and, Danny, and other people have told Danny that too. And I think that's why you haven't really heard that. And Danny understands his fan base because he listened. I mean, he's listened to so many people tell him about this fan base. So you, you have that. And then you have, you know, he has a little, you know, he has a little chip on the shoulder. I love that about him. Um, and he's forward thinking oh. and he's all about, you know, moving forward and, and, and doing things that ha- haven't been done and, testing boundaries, but at the same time, uh, respecting the past and our tradition. So uh, I think that his biggest, biggest and most important quality is the fact that he listens. And, and I, I also love the fact that when he has to respond, he always responds very factually <laughs> and just calls it what it is. The, the coach Elliot comment the other night was just amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and I love that he prefaced it. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, I know how I know who you are. You love the pettiness, but <laughs> I, I love how he prefaced it by saying I ignored this once. So he let it be known, you know, I, I tried to stay away from this, but if you're going to keep bringing it up, all right, let's be factual. Yeah. I mean, I think behind the scenes, there's been a, there's a narrative that Tony Elliott turned down Danny White and turned down Tennessee. And uh, I think Danny just got tired of it and um, just kind of wanted to be known that he didn't offer him, which I think is semantics. Hey, you know, sure. he, he may not officially offer them, but, you know, you had a conversation. You was kind of gathering information to see sure. if he if he was interested in the job. I mean, I get it. Honestly, man, I'm not picking sides. I, it's all semantics to me. But I think it's I think it's great um, that you know Danny said what he said because the fan base they they love that and um, ain't it up. You, you're the AD at Tennessee. I mean, you you take pride in not being told no. And um, we've been through several coaching searches where. There's so many public no's. I mean, the fact yeah. that we got turned down publicly by Dave Dorn yep. and, and Jeff Brom, and I mean, that's, that's embarrassing. Yeah, that's embarrassing. <laughs> that should, that should, that, you know, you don't get turned down publicly by those guys. Like, I want to be turned down publicly by Mike Tomlin and, and sure. Pete Carroll and Bill Belichick and go- coaches like that, not Dave Dorn. So, like, I, I understand <laughs> why um, Danny White did what he did. And we all know how those searches go. Like, you know, numbers being floated around as possible options do not constitute an offer. So, yeah. you know, to to even try to put that narrative out there is just I, I I have I have a great amount of pity for what's coming for Virginia um next Saturday <laughs> because you know that in the back of their minds that's gonna be there. Yeah, I mean I, <clears throat> Honestly, I hope that doesn't happen, to be honest, guys, because I mean they're gonna get beat. And they're gonna be get beat good because they're not good. And Tennessee right. is. Um, this is the first football game for Virginia since right. the tragedy. True. Right. And That's right. Um, you know, Elliot has, has navigated it the best way he, he he can through that that tragedy. And um, you know, I, I hope that, you know, we kind of approach that game with that in kind of in the back of our, our minds and, sure. and not treat those guys like we treat, you know, in UT Martin or, or Missouri or South Carolina in 21. I mean, I want to beat them. And, uh, you know, I, I want our second team guys and my third team guys to play. And, hey, if it's third down and eight and they play in press, throw the ball. Yeah. And if you make a play and you go score, you go score. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want us to be inside the – Five yard line with thirty seconds left, and call timeout, throw a fade, and, <laughs> and, 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 and score another touchdown. I don't, I don't want to do that to, to Virginia, but I will. I do want to do it to other teams. But just what, if, what if it's gas? What if it's timeout for Gaston Moore to Nathan Leacock? Is that acceptable? No, no, <laughs> no, not not to Virginia. Yeah, they they've been through a lot in the last couple of months. So uh, I that's hope that a good point. Happen. Yep, that's true. So when you look at the season as a whole, what is the one game that's circled on your calendar? What is the game you're most interested in? I oh, mean, it's, it's South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, only because of what Hypo did to South Carolina in 21 and then what Beamer did to Tennessee in 22. And um, yep. they, they rubbed it in. They piled it on on purpose. And so – I'm I'm supposed to say Georgia, right? Because you get those guys at home, um, you know, beat us last year. We're we're trying to get over the hump versus Georgia. But man, these two coaches, like, we know there's something there between those guys, <laughs> and um, we know revenge is on the mind of, of Tennessee. So, uh, revenge is on the mind versus Georgia, but it's certainly on the minds uh, versus South Carolina because of kind of how. That played out last year. Do you Wouldn't you love any chance? Do you think there's any chance that at some point during that game week, Hypo and staff are going to show that video of Spencer Rattler going like this, counting his touchdown passes? Do you think there's any chance they're going to show that video of the team? Yeah, probably. No, no, I'm <laughs> telling you, like, it, you better have a ticket to that game because that, yeah. that that's going to be how intense. Cra- how crazy is Neyland going to be that day? 
It's it's going to be they if it's a night game. Oh, oh yeah. man, if it's and it should be, it should be an evening game. I hope so. Absolutely. How how awesome would it be for Nico to get meaningful reps in that game just for preparation's sake versus South Carolina? Yeah. <laughs> If I'm saying, I'm like saying if, we, if we get to a place in that game where they're able to pull Joe and get Nico some meaningful reps. I mean, we're talking up four touchdowns. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't see that happening, guys, against South Carolina. <laughs> I mean, I hope it does. I just don't think it will happen. But I think anytime you can get Nico in, uh, I, yep. think it's, I think it's important. I don't really care about the whole red shirt thing. He's going to be no. here four years anyways. Right, uh, I and if it yeah. is, that means something something happened off schedule. So yeah, sure. As much as we can see Nico while Joe is healthy, that means Tennessee's winning some games by a large margin. Yeah, and they've got to find a way to get him some meaningful snaps from time to time because he's one play away. Yeah, so, I think he'll know. get some in the first two games for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You think? Okay, so this is. I'm sorry, I'm going off topic. You just mentioned the first two games. Do you think there's any chance? Cooper Mays plays before Florida. Uh, there's a chance he plays uh, in the Austin P game for for a little bit. I don't know how much. People freak out about that stuff, but they don't understand. You know, we actually have depth on the offensive line now. Glenn Ellerby's done a fantastic job. Yeah, it's a nice and change. If you don't need a guy, there's no reason to rush him back. You know, make make sure he's good for the games that really count. Yeah, I mean. There's more depth. I think there is a little bit of a concern, though, with uh, sure. with with left guard because it's it's a new player. I mean, mm-hmm. I know John Campbell at tackles a new player, but like he has done enough to impress um, to the point where like you feel pretty confident in him. But you know, uh, uh, Carrick and um, some of the other guys. I mean, we don't know. We sure. don't know what they're gonna do, man. Uh, exactly right. And and so until they go out there and ball out, then you know you gotta be a little bit concerned uh, what's gonna happen. So uh, totally that's the position think. I'm looking at, man. Left left guard and seeing yep. how we help hold our own versus Virginia. Everybody should feel good about John Campbell because when you think about Crawford yeah. and Mincy and the the amount of meaningful snaps they played last year. For that dude to walk in and immediately take the left tackle job and force the two of them to fight for right tackle, that should That's tell everybody point. all they need to know. Yeah, we just hope he stays healthy, man. Hundred percent. But yeah, Cam- Campbell's been he's been he's been good, man. He's on a mission. He's on a mission. Hundred percent. That's good to hear. Well, Jason, uh, just before we have you tell everybody all the ways to follow you because there's a bunch of them. Uh, we have a surprise for you. We, all right. we have a. Uh, we have a gift for you. We give it to every person who comes on our show. Jason, today you have reached the pinnacle of <laughs> Tennessee sports media. You are now an honorary bro. And uh, we, uh, everybody who comes on, we send them a shirt that says honorary bro, just like what you see on the screen. So this, I mean, this is the mountaintop for you, man. Like, I don't, I don't know, I know. How, I know. all these TV spots you got. But you, you're an honorary bro now from the Vol Bros. I mean, that's that's pretty good stuff right there. Yeah, that doesn't compare, uh, man, to this. This is Jason. This is my Jason. Moment. When you and Austin, when you and Austin both get your shirts, I'm gonna need a selfie of both of you in them. <laughs> we'll try that to make that happen. Awesome. That would be awesome. Um, but yeah, if you give us your shirt size, we'll send it to the the station at Sports Animal, and, and it'll be there. With your name on it, waiting on you. That, All that, right, man. Extra, awesome. extra medium, man. Extra, extra, <laughs> extra small. <laughs> now, I'll, I'll give y'all my shirt size. We'll make that happen, man. I appreciate y'all sending me a shirt and, and have me on. And uh, it's always good to uh, connect with with uh, Tennessee fans. And uh, I think it's great that you guys uh, have this platform. I think it's awesome that more and more fans use technology um, to have these conversations and sit around and talk about Tennessee. I think it's awesome, man. So I, I never uh, look at you guys as competition or anybody that's doing this as competition. I think it's I think it's awesome, uh, man. Let's 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 create more. Uh, let's create more content talking about Tennessee. Uh, I think I that it. just sets Tennessee apart from so many other places because uh, this fan base cares, man. And I, I think Absolutely. that's special. So 
But you guys keep rocking it, man. I, I love what you guys are doing. Well, Jason, I appreciate that very much. Jason, tell everybody about the 47 different places they can find you every week. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, every day, weekdays from 12 to 3, uh, co host a midday show right there on 991 uh, The Sports Animal, uh, Josh and Swain. From, on Tuesdays and Thursday, uh, I, I host the Swain event. Uh, my man Ben McKee of Go Balls 247. So we do that Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 9 30 uh, on our digital platform on Swain Event app, uh, video stream on, on YouTube and Facebook Live and, and on Twitter. Um, and then Sundays, we have the locker room that started up uh, there with my, my good friend Mark Packer and Chris Brown, my, my former teammate. Uh, that's on that's on Sundays and uh, Knoxville WATE the ABC affiliate uh, Nashville of Fox and then Tri Cities Fox uh, there as well and then on Saturdays <laughs> we have um, I am the MC of the UT alumni tailgates that take place there for for home games and then uh, for the Nashville game. Uh, it'll be at the Big Red there, uh, downtown Nashville. So I'm your MC for all the home games and the bowl game too. So I was there in Miami hosting that one. Um, and then I'm on the Big Orange Hotline, Vol Network's uh, pregame show that is two hours before kickoff. And then I'm your sideline reporter for the Vol Network uh, as as well. And then. On Sundays, <laughs> I co-host The Nation um, from 6 to 7 on the Sports Animal 99.1. So uh, we got a lot of things going on the, this football season. So uh, your, I guess publicist, I wanna, your publicist huh? is a really busy person. Yeah. Yeah. She, he or she really, really <laughs> is, man. <laughs> well, The Nation, I mean, that's – I mean, honestly, that is must must listen radio right there because you've got Swain, you've got Austin Price, you got Chris Lowe from ESPN. I mean, it yep. is it is fantastic, fantastic yep. hour worth of radio. So I would strongly recommend that to anybody. Uh, Jason, seriously, man, this was such a treat for us. Uh, we are so appreciative of you joining us. Just so you know, you. I, I mean, I know you don't have very much going on based on what we just <laughs> heard, but um, if you ever are like. I want to go on that Volbro show again. I mean, you have a standing invitation. Yeah, we will make time to, to, to get you on this show. So uh, we so appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Hey, anytime I can come to my office and hide from my family and talk Tennessee football, I'm all for it. So uh, you guys <laughs> give me a shout anytime. Man. I'll be more than willing to come on anytime you need me. <laughs>